how are you my friends this video is presenting the second 10 questions from the 30 old exams review questions that covers the algebra course from lectures 24 until 30. lecture 24 is other types of equations where we see quadratic in form and square root until we reach linear function Let's see, question number 11. Find the sum of all the solutions of this absolute value equation. For sure, when we see this equation, we have to rearrange it. Take 1 over 4 to the other side, take x to the other side. Now, x becomes minus x, 1 over 4 becomes minus 1 over 4. I made the calculation here for you. 1 third minus 1 fourth would be 1 over 12. Now, we see that from lecture 26, this is case number one. If we have absolute value of y, all this is y, the addition is equal to c, all this is c. So y will be plus or minus c. Remember, c should be positive number. So we have to check it at the end. So we take all this y plus c, or all this y inside here is equal minus c. Now we see here, we can just simplify this one. 1 over 12 minus x, and this one we multiply with the minus becomes minus 1 over 12 plus the x. Now, we see multiply by the LCD all 12, multiply by 12, you get 11, multiply by 12, uh, 12 divided by 3, 4, that's 8x, 1 minus 12, etc. multiply by 12. Now, find x, check the equation in the original here, in this one to make sure C is positive. Let's see the next slide. Now, this is from the last slide. 20, take X on the other side is equal minus 10. Divide by 20, so X will be minus half. In the second one, take 8 there, so that's 4X is equal to 12. X will be 3. Check each one. See, usually students, they think that the positive is okay and the negative is not okay. This is the opposite here. Check in the original equation. This is the original equation or the given equation, it's the same. So remember, C must be positive. So I put one over 12 minus the X here minus half. So one over 12 plus half, that's positive. So X is equal minus half, we accept that. One over 12 minus three, three is bigger. So that's a negative number, you don't have to do it. So X is equal three rejected. So we need the sum, it's only minus half. Question number 12, find the rate, of the rate of change of the linear function, all this is equal to its y-intercept. Find the value of d. Now, we see this is a linear function, not arranged at all. So you have to rearrange it. And remember, the rate of change is the slope. And y-intercept, you can put x equals 0 to see it. Now, let's rearrange the whole equation. 5 f of x, leave it. Take, see the x is there, minus dx on that side, minus 5. You see that one here? And then take, take a common factor x, so 1 minus d times the x. And this one becomes uh, LCD uh, 7, right? So 20 minus 35 over 7 is minus 15. Now divide by 5, divide by 5, 1 minus D over 5, divide by 5, so 3 over 7. Now what is the rate of change? Is the slope here. The slope is the coefficient of the X after you solve for Y and Y always F of X. Remember, I will say it again. The rate of change is the slope, which is the coefficient of the x, all of it, after you put f of x or y, solve for y. And see, if you put x equals 0, the y-intercept will be minus 3 over 7. So I put 1 minus d over 5 is equal to minus 3 over 7. I make an equation. Cross multiply, 7 minus 7d is equal to minus 15. d will be 22 over 7. Now, this is only two functions given. One is piecewise function. There are three pieces. You have seen many questions like this. And then a g of x is the second function greatest integer. 
just find this value f of g of pi plus f of minus 3 divided by g of half plus f of 3. So you have to plug the numbers and replace x by these numbers in the function. Here in the condition, you have to check where, where is the x, which condition, then use that part. And here, you know, greatest integer function. If you put any x, you should get out only integer less than the value or equal. So just simple uh, calculation here. I will leave this one here, I think. G of pi, I will just tell you what will happen here. Pi minus three. See, G will go to G. So this is 0 0.14. So it is zero, the integer less than that. Now f of zero, we, we go f of zero. Where is zero here? Zero between minus two and three. So it is 10. Just go slowly, please, here. Then you find the answer, one over three. That's your radical equation. Radical equations in algebra course lecture 24. You can see many other examples there. We have to rearrange the equation, put one radical on one side, all the others on the other side, square both sides. Remember, when you square here, you need the formula. Uh, one minus this, like a minus b squared. So a squared minus two ab plus b squared. So that becomes one minus two square root of x plus x. Square all this, we get inside two square root of x plus one. Rearrange it. You see, take all the, this one with the radical on this side becomes four. One will be canceled. So x equals four square root of x. Square again. X squared will be 16 x there. So easy to factor, bring it on one side x, x minus 16, so x will be 0 or 16. Remember, when you square both sides, you have to check in the original equation, in this equation here, in the original equation. So x equals 0 will be OK. x equals 16 is rejected. So the solution set only 0. Find the x is 0, this one. Find the sum of all the solutions of this equation. Now, this is absolute value and quadratic. And we can say also quadratic in form because we have absolute value, but we have to rearrange it here. See, there is x minus 5 here, 45 minus 9x. So we take 9 outside, bring the 18 equals to 0. So we have to rearrange it. Now it becomes x minus 5, 9 is there, 5 minus x when you take 9, plus 18. See, we have absolute value x minus 5, absolute value 5 minus x. We have seen many times. We discussed that in lecture 4 of the algebra course. They are the same in the absolute value. So I can leave x minus 5. It looks more nice. I can leave this one for sure. So minus 9, x minus 5. Now I use let n. So this is quadratic in form. So this is n, the smaller power. This will become n squared minus 9 n plus 18. So we factor, we find n, then back to x. So n minus 3 and minus 6, correct, multiply. So this is n squared minus 9 plus 18, correct. So we have two values for the n. Two values for the n. Now it happened in this question that n is positive here 3 and then n is positive 6. Each one will give us two solutions. According to absolute value equation, case number one, algebra course, lecture 26. So x minus 5 will be plus or minus 3. So we have 8 and 2. And then absolute value of x minus 5 is equal to 6. x minus 5 plus or minus 6. So that's 11 and minus 1. We need what? The question, find the sum. So you add all the solutions x not ends. So there's eight, there's two, there's 11, there's minus one. So that's 20. Now, just one remark. If one of these ends, let's say n3 and then n here minus six. I put here minus six. See, this is a C value in the absolute value, case one. That's minus, we say rejected. So we have only two solutions, eight and two. If one of them, if both are negative, Oh, remember here, suppose n is minus 3, n is minus 6. Both are rejected, no solution. We will not ask you about the sum. 
because there are no solutions to add. Now, this one is inequality. Lecture number 25. X plus one over X minus one, less than or equal to X plus one. The biggest mistake students can do here is to multiply both sides by X minus one. We cannot do that because in the inequalities, there are variables that can be positive or negative. So we move everything. That's why I said, be careful. Also, you cannot cancel this X plus one. No, 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 no. Move everything on the other side, all of it, you see? Minus X minus one, all of it. Then you combine it on the left here. So X plus one minus, I took a minus common factor, X plus one, then the LCD here will be X minus one up and down. Just combine it, guys. Combine like subtract and add. So this becomes X plus one, I took it common factor. Now you can multiply easily. You can multiply this if you want. Just try it, multiply this, subtract, then factor again. But see, I decided to take X plus one common. There is a one minus bracket X minus one. So in the other bracket, I get uh, two minus X. So now we have X plus one, two minus X, X minus one. Any way you do it, you will get the same answer. Believe me guys, check it. So the, the zeros are one minus one and two. So one minus one and two, three zeros there. Put all the factors and be careful about the signs. Be careful, choose a number. This is algebra course lecture 25, table of signs. You can go and review it if you like, please. Now we choose what the negative here, less than zero. What is the negative? Between minus one and one, that's negative. Between two and infinity. After you choose the interval, you have to check what, what will make the denominator zero? Uh, only the one here. So at one, I make it open. Every number will make the denominator zero. I make it open in the final answer. Now that's an easy question. We have a function. Absolute value x plus one minus five, find all this. Just be careful, replace now all this number here, minus three plus two h in the x, and then replace one again in the x. Simplify all this. Remember here, h less than zero, that's a condition. I think it's, it's easy, this one. So that's the function, replace it there. All this is x here, see, plus one minus the five from the function. Another f of one inside the bracket, one plus one in the absolute value minus five. Simplify, we have an absolute value. Remember absolute value here? If this is positive, it will be the same. If this is, it is negative because h is negative. Minus two plus two h, all this negative. So you have to put a minus outside. Simplify, cancellation, minus two. Find the product of all the solutions of this equation. Just be careful by looking. X squared minus nine on this side, X squared minus nine. If you think to cancel, that is big mistake. Because you are losing solution and maybe these are zeros. So this is a polynomial equation, we call it. A polynomial equation. This is algebra course lecture. 24. Bring all this on one side. So what do we need here? We need to find the product. So you bring it all on one side. Continue factoring. See, we see x squared minus 9 is common. Remember, there's a minus since we move this on the other side. So I have x squared plus 10 minus the x minus the 40. So simplify inside the bracket. x squared minus x minus 30. Factor this, factor this. Difference between two squares, that's a trinomial. So we have x minus three, x plus three, x plus five, x minus six. So we have four solutions. Three minus three, minus five and six. Four solutions, three minus three, minus five and six. Find the product, multiply all of them together, 270. So that's 30 and positive times nine. All right. Now, if the lines, this is a line, kx plus four f of x is equal to 24. So that's a linear function, f of x. You know, this is y always, 
and another function g of x, that's also y, minus 3 over k plus 1 x plus 15 over 4. If the lines are parallel, find the product of all values of the k. So they can be 15 minus 12, 21, 12 or minus 15, the product now. So you find the k's, maybe 1k, maybe 2k's, maybe 3k's, the product of all the k's. So the, the, the whole idea here, they are parallel, that means they have the same slope. So rearrange this. This one already rearranged. See the function here, the slope is minus 3 over k plus 1. See this one, rearrange the first one. See that's, g is already arranged. So this, uh, what, what do we do here? Take kx on the other side, kx, and then divide by 4. See 24, when divide by 4, 6. So minus k over 4x, this will be the slope, minus k over 4. And the other slope, minus 3 over k plus 1. Let's cross multiply and see. Minus k squared minus k is equal to minus 12. And then uh, multiply with the minus, see k squared plus k is equal to 12. Bring the 12, becomes another minus, factor it, k minus 4, k is equal to 3. Now remember here, if we get k minus one, see we don't accept that there, it's undefined. So minus four is okay, and three is okay. So find the product, minus 12. So the answer is B there. Okay, find the domain of each function. I said here normal, and this is not easy. Fourth root of all this, and this is one over fourth root of x minus x power four. Not easy, it needs some work there. Now, to find the domain of any function that has a radical and the index is even, you know that, even like 2, 4, 6, 8, etc., you have to take all the radicand, all of it, all of it, one time greater than or equal to zero, solve it by table of signs. Now, table of signs here is lecture 25 and also the domain the idea on the domain is lecture 25 so we took the table of signs before the domains to prepare now take everything everything like x plus 6 over x squared minus 1 greater than or equal to 0 factor this one easy now so the zeros are minus 6 minus 1 and 1 put it on the table minus 6 minus 1 and 1 here you put all these factors, x plus 6, x plus 1, and x minus 1. Choose a number there from, let's say, minus 50. Between minus 6 and minus 1, you can choose minus 3. So that's a plus, that's a minus, that's a minus. Between minus 1 and 1, you choose 0. And here you can choose 17 or 20. So when you divide and multiply, that's a minus, that's a plus, that's a minus, that's a plus. We choose the plus. Remember here, we have two numbers in the denominator. See, since we have an equal, greater than or equal, I choose the plus. Minus 6 to minus 1, that's a plus. And then 1 to infinity, that's a plus. And I should put all closed except infinity. But after I check, I see that 1 and minus 1 will make the denominator 0. So I make them open. I remove them from the solution. Now that's the normal one. Now, not easy. I will show you why not easy. One over fourth root of x minus x power four. I start the same, but since I have the radical here in the denominator, so I take only greater than, because I cannot take any number that will make this one zero. Now the factoring is not easy here, x minus x power four. So I put x, one minus x cubed. Then I factor one minus x cubed by the formula. So that's uh, algebra course lecture number 10, the factoring of two terms. If you want to go and review factoring, so uh, one minus x, one plus x plus x squared. There's a formula for a cubed minus b cubed greater than zero. Now, I put x on the table, I put 1 minus x, and then I put 1 plus x plus x squared. I cannot factor it. 
Now, in algebra course number 25, I discussed all this, one plus, if you cannot factor it, you look at the leading coefficient here. See, the leading coefficient is plus one, this one here. Maybe this is five, maybe minus six. If the leading coefficient positive, put all positive. If the leading coefficient is negative, put all negative, all of it. This one, x, one minus x, they will change from, from uh, depending on the number we choose from the interval. So choose the number there, choose the number there, choose the number there, you get minus. See, if you choose here like minus 10, this will be plus, this will be minus. Between zero and one, if I choose half positive, all this is if I choose seven, this becomes minus and this plus, and this is always plus. So I need the plus between zero and one. Y open, no equal there. So just the domain, zero to one. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, you can subscribe and share it with your friends. I wish I can see you in another video with another topic. Now you can expect the third 10 questions in the old exams repeat question. Thank you for watching.